It is time to get moving. If you've got good ideas, keep them coming. We always need new thinking in our party. But if you believe in conservative principles and you believe in your heart that the direction Barack Obama wants to take this country is wrong, it's time to stand up together and punch back. Now, the mainstream media loves nothing more than to sow division among conservatives. They love it when we take shots at each other. It gets more coverage than a D.C. snowstorm. <laughs> but unity is strength. And if you need any proof of that, just ask yourself how we ended up with government-run health care. Party unity is the reason we came within one vote, just one, of stopping Obamacare on a cold Christmas Eve morning three years ago. But it's also the reason it passed, by just one vote, every Republican against it, every Democrat for it. One vote was the difference between this stack of regulations and the alternative. So we need every vote we can get, and we need every seat we can get. But let me tell you what that doesn't mean. It doesn't mean we need to dilute our principles, more than ever, we need the kind of constitutional conservatives we've got in the Senate who've been really bringing the fight to the left. And I'm going to mention my Kentucky colleague, Rand Paul, as an example of that. He's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. He's a warrior, and we need more warriors. Which, which leads me to my next point. As conservatives, we should never be on defense about our principles or our priorities. Don't let anybody tell you that Democrats have the upper hand on the issues. I don't care what the polls say. I mean, don't tell me Republicans are the party of millionaires and billionaires when Obama's campaign arm is charging people a half a million dollars for a meeting over near the White House. We all know his so-called Wall Street reforms are embraced by Wall Street, but feared by Main Street. Fortune 500 CEOs embrace his tax hikes while small businesses shutter their windows. We're for millionaires and billionaires. Come on, don't tell me Democrats are the ones looking out for working families. The only thing this administration's economic policies have accomplished when it comes to class is to ensure that the poor stay poor. Yeah. And that the middle class lose their ability to become rich. And that the richest among us are forever insulated forever insulated by a government that protects them from failure. Ladies and gentlemen, never before has there been so little risk that rich could become poor or that poor could become rich. Don't tell me Democrats are the party of compassion. If you ask me, the liberal idea of helping the poor looks a lot more like flypaper than a safety net. Look, we are concentrated on enabling dreams. They're focusing on managing expectations. So don't come to me with that. And don't tell me Republicans are out of ideas when the entire Democratic agenda was articulated during the Truman administration. I mean, we're living in the age of the iPad. And they haven't had a new idea since the days of the Studebaker. Don't tell me. Don't tell me we're the party of intolerance when nearly two years before an election, some left-wing super PAC is sending out racist tweets about my wife for the supposed crime of being born in another country. So I want, to, I want to pause on that point. Let me tell you something about my wife. 
My wife, Elaine Chow, was the best labor secretary we ever had. You may not know that she came here in the hull of a ship, a freighter. Her folks couldn't afford an airplane ticket. She was eight years old when she got here. She couldn't speak a word of English. She worked hard her whole life pursuing a dream, and she achieved that dream. It's one of the principal reasons I fell in love with her. And it's the main reason she's a conservative. My wife is an American success story. And look, anybody who's got the nerve to question her patriotism doesn't know what tolerance is, do they? And don't tell me, don't tell me they're the party of education and choice. Today's Democrats will fight tooth and nail to protect bad teachers from being fired, and they'll, and they'll, make, they'll fight even harder to make sure inner-city parents don't have a choice to send their kids somewhere else. Don't, don't, don't tell me. The misery you see in so many cities in this country, especially among the poor, it isn't the result of the free market. It's a result of failed government programs. And we all know Detroit wasn't run by a Republican. And don't tell me Democrats represent the interests of young people. Washington Democrats stand around like a lookout guy at a bank robbery, pretending nothing's wrong. Even as the Medicare and Social Security you're all paying for goes broke. Don't tell me today's Democrats are the party of fairness when public sector unions are getting benefits that are nearly 50 percent higher than the private sector. And these are the private sector workers who are paying the salary of the public sector workers. And they spend millions of those dollars on union dues that are used to attack anybody who dares to even question, even question the logic of all of that. Finally, don't tell me Democrats are the party of the future when their presidential ticket for 2016 is shaping up to look like a rerun of the Golden Girls. <laughs> you know, we, we got Rand Paul, we got Marco Rubio, we got Paul Ryan and a slew of smart, young, and energetic governors ready to take America into the future. And the, and the other guys, they got Hillary and Joe Biden. <laughs> so don't tell me, folks. Don't tell me. We are the party of compassion. We are the party of immigrants. We are the party of hardworking taxpayers. We are the party of mobility, opportunity, growth, life, liberty, optimism, and innovation. And look, it's time we started acting like it. And once we do, we'll have our comeback. Now, I know that some on the right have argued in recent months that the Re 